Hurricane Beryl uh, roaring towards Mexico after causing destruction in Jamaica and the Eastern Caribbean. This is said to be the earliest Category 5 hurricane to hit the Atlantic region ever. Our guest says it is a sign of disasters to come. Kent Moore is Professor of Atmospheric Physics at the University of Toronto. He joins us now. Thanks very much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure, Andrew. Can you tell what is unusual about Beryl? We keep hearing it's the earliest storm of its kind in the Atlantic. So is it a record setter? It is. So it's the, um, it's the earliest uh, Category 5 hurricane ever to develop. Uh, most of the time we're talking about hurricane season, we're really talking about late August, early September. That's when typically the, the, the Atlantic Ocean is, is the warmest and warmth is what drives hurricanes. Hurricanes get their energy from evaporating water from the surface. That water then condenses into clouds and that releases heat. And so the warmer the surface, the more water that, that can be evaporated. So usually the peak is later in August or September. And so barrel forming so early is really quite remarkable. Uh, normally we wouldn't see a category five hurricane until maybe uh, middle of August. So it's really quite early. Uh, and it speaks to the warmth. The, the oceans are really, really warm this summer, and that's what's driving Beryl. I know scientists are cautious about linking any particular event to uh, global warming, but are we going to see more of this in future? Well, as I said, so as the oceans warm up, hurricanes get more energy. And so uh, we, we, we should expect to see more intense hurricanes as as the world can, continues to warm there has been a trend over the last uh, decade or so for more intense hurricanes to occur uh, and it's being driven by the fact that the oceans are warming up um you uh, you have cast our mind or you remind us of, of hurricane hazel back in 1954 before many of our viewers were born uh, it was destructive it caused loss of life um, i know toronto is not the center of the universe but could we potentially see storms like that in toronto in the future well you know so hazel was quite remarkable um we do perhaps once a decade or so get what's usually the remnant of a, of a hurricane in uh, Toronto area. I can remember one about 10 years ago that came up. Uh, you know, there's sort of two main storm tracks, you know, storms either come into the Gulf of Mexico and then typically go on board this is somewhere near Texas, or they go up the East Coast up towards the Maritimes. But some of those storms that come on shore uh, can head northwards. And again, uh, they weaken as they head northwards. But in the case of Hazel, uh, you know, there were 81 deaths in the Toronto area. I used to go biking with my kids down in the Don Valley. And if you go down there, there's actually a road network still there. Uh, but the houses have all been gone. They weren't mm -hmm. rebuilt on the floodplain after after Hazel. So it's not, um, you know, it's 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 it would be a, an exceptional thing. But we have seen hurricanes uh, or the remnants of hurricanes in the Toronto area. The last one was probably about 10, 10 years ago. So they can make it up here. And again, uh, the more in t her, Hazel was a very intense storm. And that's why even though it was traveling over land for several days, mm -hmm. was able to retain a lot of energy and dump all that precept. So again, as storms become more intense, uh, the, the, you know, the rare storm that does track up towards Toronto uh, will probably lead to uh, some um, impact. Uh, we don't build on you know, down in the Don Valley anymore, so that's not going to be a problem. But the Don Valley floods out quite often in heavy rainfalls, and so it's likely that it would happen as well. But the Atlantic Canadian provinces are the most vulnerable, I take it. They are. They, they, they get a fair number of, of these hurricanes every year just because the ones that track up the East Coast tend to kind of arc up and they end up there. There was a really bad one a couple of years ago in the uh, Maritimes. And so I would expect that the Maritimes would see uh, some, uh, some more intense storms this uh, later in the season as well. As is, I know my, we've got such a vast country and requirements are different according to different regions, but are we taking the risk of these bigger storms into account when we design buildings and plan communities? Well, that's a really good question. I, I don't think we are because, again, we build infrastructure to last for 20 or 30 or 50 years. And, of course, the uh, normals that were used to design the, that infrastructure was based on a climate that we don't have anymore. 
And so I expect, uh, as we saw uh, west, uh, you know, when the atmospheric river, there was a huge damage to the Coquihalla Highway, et cetera, because again, the bridges weren't hardened to the correct level. And so I, I would expect, you know, as, as we continue on, uh, we're going to see in, hitting to our in, in, in infrastructure. I'm in Nova Scotia today, and last year there was a really bad uh, storm uh, last July. We got like three months worth of rain in a single day, and there are still bridges in the area where, where I have my summer place that are still out. So, uh, you know, our infrastructure definitely isn't ardent enough to deal with the new climate that we're now experiencing.